Hi there, it's Dave Hepworth from Computer World and we're carrying on with our Ruckus controller videos and we're still working on the Smart Zone Essentials, the virtual controller from Ruckus Wireless. So we've powered on the, the virtual machine and now we're going to look at the console and go through the stages of how it is, easy it is to set up the Ruckus virtual Smart Zone controller. So we go to the console and for this let's pop out the console window so it makes it a little bit easier so we can see the full screen. Now, so it takes a few minutes for the Smart Zone Essentials to start loading up. Once it does, we'll go through the setup, and once we've got the setup, it will actually make it so we've got an IP address for the controller, and then we can set it up to use the web interface. So we start off, and it's literally going to be those standard passwords that you'll see on the Ruckus documentation. Log into the virtual Smart Zone. We use the standard admin and login and password that's with the documentation. And then we get into the virtual Smart Zone, and we need to enable the vir virtual Smart Zone using the documented password which you get from the ruckus documentation and then from there we then enter the setup so we just enter setup hit return and then we will go through the process of giving the virtual smart zone an IP address and then going on to the web interface so for the virtual smart zone profile we talked about it earlier before we can either go essential as a high skill so we just go number select number one and go essential so when you select the profile, you do get the kind of standard error, uh, warning message, which will just ask you if you... So we're going to go IPv4 only, select 1, and then we're going to obviously disable IPv6. And then we'll go through the process where we can use DHCP, but in this example, we're going to be using a manual uh, IP address. So we enter our manual IP address for our demo environment here at Computer World. And it will ask you to double check. And as we've only had a single nick on the virtual machine which we set up in the previous video you'll notice that for control cluster and management we actually have the single IP address which is uh, what you can see on your screens is for our demo environment so you verify that select yes and then you can just put in your primary DNS so with control NAT IP you can actually just hit return press enter to continue Okay, so now we should be able to get to the management interface for the Ruckus controller. So we'll go to the IP address that we set earlier. But this time we'll also make sure that we're on port 8443. And it's HTTPS. And then we should hit return and then we'll get the error message that there's no certificate on there, which is pretty standard. So we'll just go to advanced and we'll proceed to that page anyway. At that point, we're now on to the setup wizard for the virtual smart zone. When you first load, it will take a few minutes just to take the network information that we previously set on the console. And then once we've done that, we'll go through the information that we need to add before we can then log on to the Ruckus virtual smart zone dashboard. Okay, so with the setup wizard for the virtual smart zone, it's instantly going to ask you if you have any cluster information. Now with a cluster, what this will mean is you can have one, two, or three virtual smart zone instances, depending on how many APs or clients you need to support. So in this case, we're just going to be having the single virtual instance. So we're just going to say either a new cluster or join an existing cluster. So this is a new cluster. If it's an existing cluster, you need to make sure you have all the details of the controller name, uh, cluster name and controller name, and control description, so you can sync the two. But in this case, we're just going to go for a new cluster. We're going to do a cluster name of Computer World Demo, Virtual Smart Zone E for Virtual Smart Zone Essentials, and we'll give it the controller name of VSZ-E demo. And then control description, we'll just leave that blank for now. For the NTP server, we're going to just use the ntp.ruckuswireless.com, uh, but you can use your internal or any other NTP server that you'd like. You've just got to be able to make sure that your controller can reach that. Then with AP conversions, this is important. If you've got uh, Ruckus ZoneFlex access points that have previously used Zone Director software, uh, we want to make sure that it will convert over to the virtual smart zones AP automatically. 
So what we do when AP conversion best practice is at the moment is to select convert zone director APs in factory settings to virtual smart zone APs automatically. So if we were to if you had APs that we were troubling to convert onto the Rucker smart zone controller, then all we would need to do is do the factory reset by putting the pin into the AP for 10 seconds. When it factory resets back to that zone director firmware, the virtual smart zone will automatically upgrade and change the operating system on the AP. So we've made the changes we need to do and we just go next onto the next tab. Uh, the control name cannot contain spaces. So let's just take that space away and put a hyphen. And then we'll click next and move on to the next one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the cluster information is set. So now the controller is going to ask you to set an admin password. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our standard admin passwords. Then it'll give you a confirmation page of exactly what settings there are and how you need to review them. So profile type is essentials, cluster name is what we named earlier, protocol type TCP, and then the management IP for the cluster management on web, which is manually set. And the system time will be automatically set also. So we click finish. And at that point, the virtual smart zone will bootstrap. And this is going to take normally about 20 to 30 minutes. So after about 20 minutes, you would have noticed that the configuration would have finished. And at that point, the Ruckus Setup Wizard will give you a link that you can click on, which will get you to the dashboard of your controller. And when you click on the link, it will redirect you to the Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone Essentials login page. And all you've got to do is log in with this password that you set earlier. And there you have it. You're logged into the Virtual Smart Zone Essentials dashboard. And from here, we can start looking at AP summaries of number of APs connected, client type summaries, traffic summaries, client count summaries, top 10 applications by client count. And we can also look at the wireless network summary. So over the next coming weeks, we'll create a number of videos to show you how to use the most or get the most out of your Ruckus Virtual Smart Zone Essentials controller. And we're going through sections of how to monitor various access points, how to look at the configuration, of your wireless network and WLANs and also how to look at reporting and the administration of your Ruckus smart zone. A really simple controller to deploy and over the coming weeks we'll see how easy and accessible it is to manage all of your access points and clients in one central place from a single pane of glass.